Yes, people, Black Eyes TV in the house once again, bring you that knowledge, information, and overall wisdom at the end of it, yeah. We're back again, second show of the year. We're getting into our Black British history today. But before we get into that, let me speak to my co-host, Mr. Riggs. Talk to the people, then. Greetings, family. Hope you are going to have an enjoyment of history today, as we can explain that we're we're in four four parts on four paradigms. Understanding we deal with the history, understanding we deal with the health, understanding we deal with mind and spirit, and we deal with economics. Understanding today we're dealing with history and we're dealing with facts, proof, and things to see and to understand. It is around the world. So wherever you look, we are we're present in that place. Now, today we have a special guest. As you've seen him before, and you've seen him twice, a matter of fact, on our platform. And I'm going to introduce you to him, which his name is... Uncle Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Michael, listen Michael, to you. Michael, how have you been? And, and listen to you, listen to you. At the beginning of a year. And, well, I'm, uh, I'm well, guys. Okay, what you've been up to? Well, I'm well, guys. I, I, spent, I spent Christmas up in Liverpool with my family. You know, mm -hmm. all my family, they still live five miles of each other in Liverpool. I am the only one of my family. And we are three generations now. Three generations. But my family, wow. we're alive now. There's four of you. We've been here since, since the uh, turn of the century. But they all still will live, live within five miles of each other. So I'm the only one. Not there. So it's always great to get back and see the family and have all those uh, Christmas things, playing those games that you play once a year, you know? You know, it's like eat that food to excess and all those things. So it was good. It was a good Christmas. Okay. So we're now in a new year and a new era. Uh, Michael, uh, what have you been up to? Because I know you're a very um, researchable person and you <laughs> like to go around checking up on things and finding information for the general public to understand and hear. Well, we, 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 so you know, my, my passion is, is, is uh, Black British history, making the connection, making it real, making it relevant today, bringing it to life. And there's, there's you just... It's been a great start to the year because a number of the products I've been working on in the past have come together. My uh, my, my big project, what will be showing me this after this evening, is uh, my John Blank project. That is really really happening. We have had two two great events. One at the British Library, College of Arms. I want to share some of what what, what we did there. Then then we got then I do. I do conferences, a conference called What's Happening in Black British History. It's now, okay. it's, we do it twice a year. And um, we're setting up now for our uh, eighth, What's Happening in Black British, eight, Black British History, eight. And that's going to be on, it, would you believe, Huddersfield. You know, we, we have, we, it's twice a year. Once it's in London at uh, Senate House, University College London. It's into the provinces. We've been in Liverpool. We've been in Bristol, been in Preston. Now we're going up to Huddersfield. So we're taking the history to the people. I think that's really okay. important because history is not just London. You know, black black history is not just yeah. We 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 we've realised that. <laughs> and and but the other thing which is really taking off well, well, I'm so proud of it is what I call the image of the black in London galleries. Okay. In, this is tours of. Uh, the National Gallery and Tate Britain, mm -hmm. there. because you know we we, we we show how the, the black presence moved from objects or subjects of capital culture, as in as enslaved people, right through to where we are today, to creators of capital of culture. You know, we've got mm -hmm. people like Steve McQueen, Keith Piper, Chris Feely, who are doing great things, who are creating culture. And we contrast okay. that with, with back in the day. That's where my image in the black in London gallery is. Uh, so so yeah, there's a lot going I, on. It's exciting times. Yeah, because I, I want to break down because, you know, um, what, what, what we've realised today in, in the format of um, 
understanding our black history, but then a lot of people have been overwhelming to, to almost generalising the whole um, the UK as being black. But I said it's 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 been a, always been a interracial um, mixed people within the, the um, England area. You know, you're right because England is an island. Everybody is come to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. England, England, England was never white, never black. People came to it. They populated it, mm -hmm. and it was predominantly European, predominantly white. But no, there's a yeah. lot of black people over the not just over the last seventy, eighty years, but the last thousand, two thousand years. There's been a black presence of mm -hmm. one form or another. And that's why I, I like to explore and find out and make those connections, make those to make that um, to, to make that to make it visible, because it's important in the sense that we have we, we have we, we have black people know that they that, that they were here, a part of British history. That, and for me, I get frustrated when people talk about black history and British history. But I, I, I like to see it as black British history. It's, it's one. We're the, the history of Britain is all, includes black people, so it's part of British history. On the other side, there weren't thousands and thousands of centuries, but they were there, enough to make an impact. Most definitely. Most definitely. So, so, Richie, so Richie, any questions? No, no, I want to get straight into this John Blake because we know the last time you was here on the platform, you was talking about this John Blake project. So for the people that didn't catch that first show, give them a backdrop on what okay. that's about and who he is as far as in <laughs> and space and history. Oh, wow. You know, I always, I always call John Blake a gangster. A <laughs> gangster? Why is that? Why is that? Yeah, because because of the period of time he lived, and he could actually demand something from somebody <laughs> at that time. He could have got, head, he could have got his head chopped off. No, I'm mean, no, no, going to talk about this. He had skills. He, he had skills that people valued. So mm -hmm. they were prepared to pay for those skills. They were prepared to pay for those skills. So look, what I'd like to do then is just give you an introduction to the project. So you yeah. can understand wh 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 where it comes from and hopefully wh wh where it's going. So b bear with me in the technology. I'm going to switch to the let's share the screen here. All right, let's get this screen share on. Okay. Okay. Now, can you guys see that? Yeah, we we, we locked and loaded. We in. We locked and loaded. Okay, let's hide. Oh. I've lost them in a second. I've lost it now, just a second. Oops, don't want it at there. Okay. I'm going to take you to the John Blank Project, but to understand the John Blank Project, you need to understand John Blank and where he came from. Well, the John Blank Project came from something I, I worked with uh, Miranda Calfum. We used to talk about image and reality. Black Africans, Renaissance Europe. What, what, why, why image and reality? Well, I would do the image because that, that's my background. I'm an art historian. Whereas Miranda would talk about the reality. The images I studied, the Black Magus and St. Morris, didn't exist. They were fabrications. Perhaps we'll have time to talk about that. There were many thousands of images of these black people, St. Morris, of these two black figures, but they didn't exist. Yet there was only one this is John Blank here. He was the reality. So the roots, the roots of the John Blank project is the fact that here we are, we've got a man, a black man in the period in, in 16th century England of him. And here we have the Black Magus who didn't exist, but there's thousands of images of him. So we're trying to reconcile that. To, how can we make those two those 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 two statements equivalent i.e how can we get more pictures of john blank and that's part of the project let me explain first let me explain who john blank is 
John Blank Aces. It comes from here. This is the College of Arms. This is a, the, an archive, an ar the archive of the College of Arms. The College of Arms is uh, the place that stores the English heritage, the, Hingli the English coat of arms that, that stores the, the Queen's lineage. And the, the College of Arms was where the heralds reside. And the heralds were, were given the job of, of, of logging the Queen's heritage. So, you know, when, when, two, when two kings meet or two queens meet, they, they list who they are. Who, who their father was, who their, their grandfather, their great father, their great, they go back and back and back. The heralds contain that information. They also, they also, they also created your, your coat of arms. If you wanted a, a, an arms, the, a, a memorial, you went to the College of Arms and, and their, their trade, as it is to be more fond of it, goes back to the, the 13th century in the College of Arms you, to this day, which go back to the 14th century. But one of the people I did was this guy called York Herald. And that's a function. It's not, it's not a newspaper, it's a function uh, in the College of Arms. And that's where John's, John Blank's picture lies. Oh, is the public record document. It's here where all the court records, the, the records of state for, for England's courts are held back to the um here you've got the doomsday book is here you've got all the in this is this is in this is the, the archives of, of of british history are here the original documents wouldn't be place I, uh, I recommend you have, I just uh, if you ever get the chance go and visit and go and look for a document and they you, you have to handle original texts i remember when they first gave me um I was looking at the Doomsday Abbreviato. This is a 13th century document. And they, they allowed me to, to handle it myself. It wasn't a big deal for them. But for me, it was just a shock to handle such original document that's 700 years old. You know, part of really central to British history, part of the Doomsday Book. So the British record, the, British, the public record is an extraordinary place for if you're interested in original sources for British history. There was... This man, the man, the, man on the, the man on the left, the man on the left is a, is a guy called, he's called, his name is Dr. Uh, Sidney Anglo. And he first made the connection because he was doing some work on the court, the, the court um, functions of Henry VII. And one of his courtly practices was, was, he, had, there was he had trumpets, trumpeters, and he paid for trumpeters to appear in, in court to play music for him. A black character, a John Blank, in the, the College of Arms document, a picture. And also in the record, and I'll show you in a minute, in the record it mentions John Blank. Connection between the picture and the record. Let me show you. And here it is, here's the footnotes. Here's the foot, you can see here, this is the footnotes in the document where he says, I believe this John Blank Negro in the great tournament role, the Westminster, uh, the, the, the great role of the tournament at Westminster held in 1511. And that great role was held at the College of Arms. In the archives, making a link to a document to the College of Arms. Let me show you what he was looking at. Here's the document he was looking at here. This is John Henry. John Henron, he was the, John Heron, sorry, John Heron, he was the accountant of the, Henry VII, and this is his books here, and it says there, it says here, it says, item to John Blank, the black trumpet, for his month's wages of November last, passed at 8D, that's eight old pence the day, shillings for the month, and 20 shillings, is about one pound, and a pound is about one dollar twenty. One dollar twenty a pound, and there's the documents on the left here. That is the Westminster Tournament Roll. About that tournament roll in a moment, but that was the doc, the, the pictorial document in the College of Arms that that Sidney Anglo saw. K 
character in, and he made the link between this John Blank. So real history in action. And John Blank actually appears in the archives from about 1507, 12. And he, he's, he was paid wages there, that, that 1507, we just had a look at that document. Henry the Seventh's funeral, he was given a, he was given um, materials, some black material to play there. It's recorded. And then he plays a Henry VIII's coronation in, in later that year. And then he plays at the Westminster Tournament Roll. And this is where we know him from. And I'll show you that Westminster Tournament Roll document in a moment. And here is most famous, one of the most famous documents. He petitioned for wages. I'll show you that document in a moment. And Sadly, well, not sadly, he, 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 we know he got married in 1512 because the king ordered the great wardrobe to give him a bonnet and some cloth for his marriage. This appears from the record because the next time they list the trumpeters, he's not there. So we know from 1507 to 1512, brief years, he was in England. He was set in England playing at the court of Henry VII, Henry VIII. Let's just have a look at this, uh, this petition. Give me, here it is. Prime resources. Yeah, here it is, this, this, is the, this is the document here. Now, it's, it's, it's in medieval English, it is in English, if you understand that, you, you can see here, you can see that says John. And then there, that says Blake. Now, we're at a time here, with, his name was John Blank, and it's spelled several different ways in the record. John Blake with Blank without an E, with an E, or John Blake. But that's clearly John Blake, the, the, the John Blake. And this is him petitioning. Now, right, or we believe he couldn't write. And his first, thing, his first language wasn't probably English. So he had a scribe to write this for him. And it's a very formal document where he, you know, he, he, he praises the king, wants the king to live forever. Time is very forthright and says, Dominic has died, and I need to, and, I, and I'm doing the same job as he, him do, he doing, and I should be kept the same standard if I'm to keep on doing what the king wants me to do. And I want my ways to be doubled from eight pence to 16 pence the day. And I want it backdated. So, you know, he wasn't messing around here. He was saying clearly what he wanted. This, uh, that, that's, pretty, that's, what, that's why he probably knew he was valued. That's he knew he was valued. Him. Yeah. And this is important here because a lot of people believe that, or many people believe that black people at this time were slaves. Here, that he wasn't a slave. Not only was he paid, but he was, you know, he asked for more wages, and he got it. Obviously, he did it in a respectful way, a respectful way. You know, this is there's a, there's, there's a protocol when you when you ask the king to give you money. You know, and the, and would, the scribe has put it in that language that the, 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 the king would appeal to the, appeal to the king. But nevertheless, it's in a straightforward, give me the money kind of language. And there, here we can see. That is Henry VIII's signature. Signature on a, on a black man's petition for more wages. It's still quite a credible document. And let me tell you, documents. It's quite, you know, it's extraordinary. You know, you feel, you have the sense of what this means. You know, can you imagine what being in the room as the scribe was writing that? And then how did he give it to the king? The king? I believe this would have been read to the king. You know, John Blank would have stood in front of him, and perhaps John didn't read it, but his scribe read it to him. And then the king signed it in front of him. I wonder if he smiled. <laughs> I'm sure he did. But this, but this, adds, this on the one hand, is, is a real detailed piece of information. But then if you look back, we know him, we know from 1507 to 1512, those five short years, where he came from, where he went to, who he married. These, these things we don't know. 
Yeah, we've not that maybe there are records out there, but they've yet to be found. Mm. There's there's so much we don't know about his life. <laughs> so we know a tantalizing little. But having said that, there's 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 uh, Miranda Calvin found over three hundred uh, blacks in in Tudor Tudor and Stuart times, and most times it was just a fleeting word that you found in a parish record. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, Michael, I was just reading in the comments in the, in the comment section. Big up to the um, true historian from the states who's blessed us with a lot of information. He's, oh, thank you, thank you for that. Someone called Grace Robinson. Have you heard of that that female before? Oh no, the name does Grace Robinson. No, but that does not mean to say she did. <laughs> the, 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 the formation, Grace. There was a. I've not heard of a Grace. I've not heard of a Grace Robinson. She, she, um, she, she was in the Queen's court. When you say the Queen, which Queen? That's what I've got to find out. But that we can continue anyway. Okay. I'll find I, out. A bit I would. Suspect, I would be okay after that. I'd have to know a little bit more about the the the, 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 the grace we, we, which one we were talking about, but which yeah. queen? Okay, okay. If we move on, this is this is the Westminster tournament role we're going to talk about now. Yeah. This is a truly extraordinary document. Why? Let me tell you why. Because it it celebrates the birth of a child, the birth of a son on New Year's Day. Arrogant. Henry VIII, and this was a fantastic thing for Henry, because it would have meant that the Tudor line continues, and that would have meant continued. Then people would be calm. There'd be no uncertainty about what happens if the king dies. He dies without an heir. There's a there's, a, there's literally a power vacuum. Literally a power vacuum. You know, the stories of, you know, when when Elizabeth I was dying, she, her, her heir was not apparent. You saw ambassadors were leaving England. People, you know, her court was kind of falling apart around their ears as, as rumour of a, of a near death was reported. Because they didn't know the future. But having the son born on New Year's Day, 1511, that was part of Henry's future, that, 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 the, that the crown was secure. England had a future. And to celebrate this, he had a giant tournament. And not just any tournament, not just any jousting. The English jousting was much, much, much more a, a primitive, much more a physical thing. You know, blokes would meet in a field and try and knock each other off horses. Imported the idea of the Burgundian joust from Europe. What's a Burgundian joust? Well, a Burgundian joust is where you layer on a story to the joust. And the story for this joust was the four knights of the heart of the queen. And, and they jousted to win to win the queen's heart. And they and there was there was a lavish affair in this jousting. Now you have to remember now the equivalent of what F1 would be today. This was young men strutting their stuff, showing how strong they were. You know, I, I'm bigger than you. My my horse is faster and stronger than you. So here's Henry. What we're seeing here, this scene here shows Henry arriving with his henchmen. This, this is Henry on his, on his horse there with the cave of the king, with all, with all the gold and the, the pageantry, the pomp of pageantry of the king arriving. And the scroll is a, is a testament to that. If I try and put the, the, the tournament in, 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 in focus, it's been said that if this was the Olympic Games, then the opening ceremony would be two weeks. The games would be two days, and the closing ceremony would be one week. Because this was this was an opportunity for Henry and his court to parade, to pomp. And they were 
all of the courts, all the ambassadors from all over Europe, the, 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 all the, the church the, will, will be there to see the king in all his glory with, all, with, 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 his, um, with his court at play in, in this joust. We have the central scene of the, of the document. This is a, the scroll is about 60 foot long. And this is, this is close to the center here. And this shows you the king knocking. You can see there, you can see that the king has knocked a knight off. And that in jousting terms, is what's known as a taint. And that's a top, top score to break your lance on your opponent's head. Now, let me, I'll let you into a little secret here. That never happened. It never happened. Why do we know that? Because we've got the, the scorecard. We've got the scorecard from the day. And we know our heavy scorecard. And that, that tape never happened. But this is the king. It's his, it's his scroll, his roll. So it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll appear to big him up. Uh, early propaganda. Exactly, exactly. And you have to remember, guys, at this time, there's only two power plays in town. Only two. One is the state, the other is the church. You pay taxes to one, ties to the other. And we as common men, we just look on and admire. <laughs> look on and admire. Uh, or equally, know your place. Know your place. And there, the background there, with, that's Catherine of Aragon, with the ladies of the court looking on. And this joust was about winning the heart of the, of the, uh, of the queen. And I'm going to ask you, who do you think won the joust? Well, come on, we're, we're going to go with the king, innit? <laughs> exactly, the king every time. These guys here, these, the, these are what's known as the ants, these are the challengers. And these are the answerers. That's the formal jousting terms. And they're sitting there waiting to have their go at jousting. Now, John Blank appears twice on the first terms of Toilet Rome. First here at the start, we see him with, 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 the, with the trumpeters at the, announcing the, the procession as they come in come into the joust. This is on day one. And you have to remember, music is the punctuation of the courts. Here comes the king, trumpet. There goes the king, trumpet. Food is served, trumpet. You know, it was, <laughs> trumpet, there was, as the, as, as the records say, there was much trumpeting, much trumpeting going on. Now, I told you he appears twice. And he, this, he appears, this is the second time he appears. And this is the more this of the well-known image of him here. You can see him with this, the six the, the six trumpeters, and you see, you see they're all dressed the same. And the only thing that's different about our John Blank is his head, because they're all virtually the same face. They just popped another head, a different head. And if you look carefully, you will see. Guess what? What's so what's so wrong with that hand? Why? It's a white hand, and you can you can see why because they just popped a black head, drawn trumpeter. Now, why why did you say why, why didn't someone correct this mistake? Well, what happened was that by the end of February, the his son, that new prince, the king to be, died. So you can imagine now, after all the celebrating for this tournament, the, the king does not want to see this document. This document is, 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 not, is something the king does not want to see. So it's, it was, we argue it was finished quite quickly and just left. So it, this, this, this wife hand went unnoticed at the time because the, the, the baby was, the baby, that this tournament celebrated was dead. And that was uh, a, a terrible, terrible blow to Henry. Because as I, as I mentioned earlier, the king was, it was important to him. It was important. 
But there we have it, the two images of John Blank. Now, the other image, I mentioned the, the Black Magus. This figure here is a Black Magus. It comes from this, this, this panel here. And this is, this is a, a Black Magus from 16th century Devon. This is, this is about 1507. About the same time that John Blank was playing in that um, tournament in London, here was a Black King in Devon. And he, the Black King, as I say, was a, a celebrated image. There's many thousands of them. And it, it, it comes from this image. It can be dated back, or the Black image can be dated back to this. This is one from 1555, 1455 over 50 years earlier. This is in Köln, Germany. And this is by a, an artist called Roger van der Weyden. And that, that's a very famous, the very famous Köln altarpiece, where you have the young black, the young king here on the flamboyant on the edge of the, uh, the scene, entering the scene. Mm. Now, van, van der Weyden had a student called Memling, Hans Memling. And he copied that image, but he made one slight amendment. He made the young king into the young white king into a black king. Mm. And that that image really took off. This is this is 1470 now. So 1417 in Germany, and that uh, and our image I showed you earlier was was about 1507. So kind of almost 40 years to reach to reach um, Devon. So we start off with Van der Weyden, you can see it there, there's our, our white king. And Weyden's student, Memling, makes him a black king. Yeah. And here, if you look, these are some of the images of the black king all over Europe, different versions of the black king. But then finally, let me just go back a bit. All those, those, those images are, are just a few of the many versions of the black king the other black image is, is St. Morris. And this is a St. Morris, the one here. This is a St. Morris from Devon. I should talk about, I'll tell you a bit more about the image another time. But I thought this is the most important one. This is, this goes back to 1250. This is the black St. Morris, an extraordinary um, image, extraordinary. It, it's, it's in um, Magdeburg Cathedral in Germany. And I've had the pleasure of seeing it at first hand. Quite an extraordinary piece, quite an extraordinary, very, I got, it's quite emotional to see it because it's a very recognized, you do. And there, these are many copies of, uh, of, of, of St. Morris. So you can see the Black Magus and St. Morris were well copied, but neither of them existed. They were fabrications for the church and for the state. They, they made up these images and, 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 and developed them and created them because no black king visited Europe during the period. So there was no image to go on. And St. Morris was, it was, it was developed from a story. Again, another, a, a fabrication. Mm. So the John Blank project tries to, tries to, to make some sense of this. So what I do, I, I, Oh, it all comes back to this to, to this place here, this, this place, this Tower Hill in London. And if we go into the underpass of Tower Hill, we can see here there's those these murals here by Stephen Watley celebrate the life of Henry VIII. This one here is there. Now you may recognize that image. You may recognize that image ah, as the that. central scene. Let me go back. Sorry. That image, that is a central scene from the um, Westminster tournament role. Yeah, the job. On the edge, he's drawn John Blank. Now, what was, for, what, was, what was so exciting for me about this was, here was an artist, Stephen Watley, ethnic or cultural interest in the Black John Blank, but he included him because he thought it was for completeness. It just made sense. It made aesthetic sense to include him in, 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 in the image. Now let me just move forward over again. Let's go forward. There's Stephen. And what, what I do now, I work with other artists. That, that's Rowan, Rowan Clark. 
Um, his name his name, his name stuffed you for a moment. He'll come back to me. Pete McCaldon, an artist. Pete Mc, he's an artist. Forward can some of you may know. That, that's Charmaine Watkiss, Kofi. There's um, so Joe Liddington, Ebu Colwyn, Kamathi Donko, Matthew um, Randolph Matthews, um, oh, Joe Solomon, uh, Khadija George. These are artists, poets, and I get them to celebrate John Blank in the in their media, so that you take the image and you make it reality in in your in your own terms. Because in terms of English history, the the, image, the, the Magus image is quite well is not well known. This is just two examples. This is from um, Great Malvern Priory, and this is a piece of alabaster, English alabaster that that. Um, the, 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 and these are piece, this piece is in the Victorian Albert Museum, and this is, as I say, in, in Malvern Priory. These are examples of, these are very few examples of the Black Magus. This is our the, the Black Magus from Devon. One of the things I actually I love about him, and you see on many Maguses, is this earring. The Black Magus is always has, a, has, a, has an earring. And you'll never see the White Magus with, with an earring. It's always the, the Black, the Black Magus. And, this guy, just, just a word on his face. I believe this may not have seen a black person. So he was just drawing him from, or painting him from memory. Mm -hmm. So going back to, to what the John Blank project is about, because these two images, the, 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 the King and St. Morris were like the unicorn and the mermaid. The both fictitious characters, just as there's lots of images of mermaids and unicorns, you know, but, but there, there are many pictures of St. Morris and uh, the Black Magus. So he's, here are some of the pictures that the artist did for me, I've done for, I've done of John Blank. That's what the project is about. I work with the artists to recreate their version of John Blank. And it's not just with artists now. I work with writers, with poets, got rappers, and right now there's over 50, 50 different artists who've made a contribution to the project. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some, let me just, just, let me just show you some, now, just a second, let me just put, there we go. See, here's, here's, some, there's all, here's some of the 50, 50 plus artists. Ethan Bowen, David Nietzsche, the poet, there's this Graham, Graham Mortimer, He's done some brilliant work in uh, in church, church in, 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 in church in church paintings and church sculpture. So there's Larry Achimpong, mentioned um, Kamathi Donko, Paul Dash. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a, um, a private view this weekend. Phoebe Boswell. So many artists. And um, as for the historians, some of you may know. Do you know this Robin Walker? They've all these com they've com they've contributed a piece. Uh, Onyeka, Hakim Adi, um, um, Olivetti Otelli, they've contributed a piece to the project. If I show you what, what, what I might get the artist to do, let me, let, let's look at what the artist Let's Let's take uh, um, forward cam. Yeah, we'll cam. I, get, I get each artist to make a statement on blank. And here he says, I imagine John Blank as the man who blew a medieval fanfare that echoed down through to the 20th century jazz era and continues to the classic players of the 21st century. The key word there is I imagine John Blank as, because there are many people, many historians who can't imagine a black presence in Tudor England, but the project of John Blank's presence refutes that. And my project just builds on that to show you people celebrating. Let's, let's look at what um, Robin Walker, Robin Walker, he makes a statement about, he, he, an interesting point about the fact that he sees black history as the history of great people who've had an impact on British, on, on, on world history. You know, the Martin Luther Kings, the, um, uh, the um, 
<laughs> my mind's gone back. You're talking about Martin Luther King, the Nelson Mandela's, the Malcolm X's, these people who are significant. Mm. And it's it questions, you know, the impact that John Blank has, and quite rightly so. You know, how could one trumpeter, what impact can he have on world history? As my, my mom used to say this, mom used to say, it's good to see your face. You know, the fact that you see yourself represented. Okay, he's not, he's not the king. John Blank was not the king, but he was there. Well, you see, you see, to that point, Mike, let me just interrupt you with that. Point. I think it is important to see people in smaller roles and in the idiosyncrasies of society. Because again, with black history, because we've been denied it for so long, we tend to gravitate to the king's stories. We tend to gravitate to the queen stories and those, you know, the high priest, the important roles when it is just as important to know that you are part of every cog and every level of society, not just the main record keepers or the people to be mentioned, as you're saying, in every level of history. We were actually the working people, the people keeping society ticking over. Yeah, as you as you already mentioned with the trumpeting, it was a major part of that society. Yeah, exactly. That he did. So, you know, to highlight him is key because again, having somebody in the presence of the king all the time gives you a different aspect and a different way of looking at history when you understand that they ha had no fear of having a black man there. It changes your whole opinion and the narrative of certain conversations. And that's just on the smallest levels, let alone when we go to the kings and queens. And as you're about to bring up here, the Blackamoors and, and those levels of history. You know, it's a piece from Onyekin. He, he, he writes a very thoughtful piece. And he says at the end, I'll read it. He says, Blank is important and we, we are celebrating him here. But only when he becomes less important will we actually begin to understand him. England's, England's history and the African in it more clearly. Notoriety, notoriety means, means there is much work for us to do. Mm -hmm. See him as exceptional. And to your point, he's not exceptional. I look forward to a time when we see, we see a black person, that, oh yeah, there were black people in Judah times, and we think nothing of it. We normalize it. Yeah. Right now, he's got notoriety. You know, he's special, he's different, he's our oh, John Blank. But in reality, there are other John Blanks there. Not thousands, but there was enough for us to be, to, to, but hopefully for us to look forward to a time when, let's say, our children's children see that as part of, of history. And that, to me, will be the success of the John Blank project and other projects where people working on, on, on black British history, where we, where we, where we know, where we just seen it as, as normal people, as we are, as we do, as we do, as we go about our normal day. They were, we're not making history, we're just doing our thing. You know, just as, as, as I see John Blank doing his thing. So what, 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 what I get people to do, I have, I have this, um, what a concept called, concept called John Blank, Project Live. It's about art archives action. It's about bringing the archives to life. And there's a, there's a couple of ways I do it. The first is we do some, uh, we have some symposium. What are them? Well, these, these are symposium. These are open mic sessions. Open mic sessions where we have about eight, nine artists, contributors, and they come up to the mic and spend five, 10 minutes talking about how they imagine John Blank, how they imagine John Blank to create their version, either, either in rap or in poetry or a picture. So they recreate. Now, they're all different. That's what's so exciting about the project. Some, some, of, the, some, of, the, some of the ideas the, these artists come with are quite fanciful and are quite, wow. But the, what's so exciting about it, it's their idea, it's their wow with a bit of fact about John, and then they extemporize, they take him further. So we had two, we had two symposiums, we had one at the, the British Library, it was a sellout, really well received. Um, 
a session online uh, probably later this week you'll be able to see the whole the, the whole the whole session we also had one at the college of arms sold out again a different set a different group of artists this time because what's exciting about it is we i've got um because i've got 50 plus artists historians poets musicians we could we could pick and mix and match so it's quite exciting you get a different you know a, a, a different a different uh, view as, as each person comes up he, he comes up to the mic and explains the john blank what what's what, increasingly I'm, we're doing workshops now we're going to, we've been going to primary schools we're working with old age pensioners we've done some work in prisons in schools and what we do is we get people to imagine their john blank we give them the history what I've done some drawing ones. Let me show you some examples here. We get this is what kids school. We get them to draw the, the John Blank and to, and sit and write how they imagine the, the John Blank. I've done it for OH pensioners. And we're now we're just we're developing a writing workshop to do some creative writing around John Blank. And it's all about bringing him up, bringing him to life, to make it you know, to, to, to say he was there and he we see them as this person as that person as they extemporize them from what they know to create a more fully around the character in their terms my big dream my big dream is this this is a no a, 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 a movie and what's so exciting about the movie is that we have we, we have two black people who existed who were at the court of henry the eighth and Queen Catherine of Aragon, so they were real people. And they know something in the Queen that would have affected whether or not they could be divorced. And we have two black people here at the center of an intrigue between the Prince of Wales, his miss, the King's mistress, the Queen, an emperor, and a Pope. And the center of it is, is this black couple. I won't, I won't go into details about the movie. There's a play, we've written a small play as an introduction to it there by uh, D.D. Armstrong. But you can see how the, the project has is, is brought together all these different skill sets yeah. to recreate John Blank. And from such a, because he's just, a, to your point, he is a simple, work, a simple working man, a trumpeter. But it means because we know so little about him and he was at that time so rare we have to bring him out and all these historians uh and uh, artists help recreate john blank and make him real today to make that connection between the art and the archives and us today and that's what the john blank project is really all about oh, definitely definitely uh, where where can people find you if they want to come to this website? Where's your email at? Well, well it's, it's very simple, johnblank.com. Johnblank.com. And we, we also got a Twitter account. It, it, let me show you the Twitter. It, it's, um, I just go there. It's, 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 it's uh, can I sign in here? No, no, I can't say. It. I can't say it here. It's uh, who is uh, who is John Blank? Uh, sorry, let me just let me see if I can go. To, let me see if it will let me go. Who is John? Blank? By the way, you mentioned them, um, Dee Dee um, Armstrong. Is it, is it? Who is on? No, that, that's it. Who is John? Yeah, Dee Dee Armstrong, the 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 the, uh, the writer, playwright. Yeah, my friend. Yeah, I know he's a tough guy. He's, he's, he's working on a, a really interesting project about a Chelsea footballer. The, okay. the first black Chelsea footballer. Yeah, you know, he, he, some used, great he used to live right outside the football, sta football stadium. <laughs> yeah, he's a great guy. Only trouble is he supports Chelsea. You know, and I, I, wish, he, I, I wish, he's a, wish he'd support a proper team like Liverpool, you know? Thanks, Adam, bro. <laughs> Arsenal. No, we, we don't Arsenal. Need them up in London. <laughs> Arsenal, 4 2. Hello? <laughs> Listen, we're not doing that now. Get out of here with that. <laughs> so, so you, you, to, to find out more John Blank, either just johnblank.com or you can get on Twitter, who is John Blank? And then you, you, you can. You, you can uh, 
you can get involved in terms of you can see the kind of stuff we're doing. And maybe if you know art, I'm always looking for new artists and to, 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 to engage in the project in, in, in uh, I've even got, uh, we, I, didn't, I didn't tell you, but we've got some, some quilting. There's a lady who's done a quilt based on John Blank. You know, it, 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 there's many different ways you can be expressed. I'm always looking for new and interesting ways to 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 engage to engage with with uh, John Blank. All right. Well, listen. We're before when we were talking. You, I know you're involved with Black History Walks as well, and doing a few other things. Talk about that with the art historical. Okay. Okay. What other thing? Well, well, you know, I've always been in. I've been well. My my passion is the Black presence in Renaissance Europe. Uh, and I've always been interested in art. Um, I've, I was frustrated that the National Gallery has many, many, the National Gallery in London here has many paintings with a black presence, but they don't talk about it. They used to have a, a Temi Odomosu was there. She had a little, uh, she did a, a guide, but that's gone now. And, and they've removed the black presence from their site. They used to have a little black presence. If you go on the Wayback Machine, you can find it. What they have, but they've, they've eliminated it now, and I guess they've kind of. Well, I don't know. I've never. I, I, I don't quite understand why they've eliminated. But there are some great pictures in there, some that really mean something to, to to black people, and there's a strong black presence. So let me uh, let me bring it up. So what I did, I developed. I developed this. This is. Uh, there we go. This. The image of the black in London galleries that it's a it's 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 a kind of homage. It's a it's a homage to image of the black in Western art. I don't know if you know. This is a, a ten volume series of images of the black in Western art. It's just it's an extraordinary. I've got in fact, there's more. There's eleven volumes now of from of the black presence in art, which comes from from the um, times. Right up to the to today, it's a, it's a brilliant book. I, I I dip into it all the time, and and I, I use that my knowledge of the, of that book to 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 develop a tours, and the tour really is based on that that that, that strapline from object and subjects of economic capital to creators, developers, and definers of cultural capital. Funny, you know, because some people think well, the black presence is just to do with slavery. You know, calm down. It's more than that. It's right. It's, it's it's richer. It's wider. It's deeper. And there's, there's a many different ways black people are, are, are in the galleries. National gallery. You know the things we look at. If 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 you come on the tour, we look at the Moor's head. Moor's head. This was in the Renaissance time. That was the Moor's head related to the Moors from the Saracens and the Crusades. Used in the in, in the instances I show in the, in the gallery, it was used as on the guys on on the name. And I'll show you an example here. This look, look at this this image here. This guy here is Alexander Mornauer. More, there's a more, and he played on it. Let me show you. If you look at his, let me just bring this up a second. Yeah, if we come down a sec. Oops. Come down. Oh. You can see there is a Moore's head. So he played on that. Puns were very popular during this period. They were talking about mid 15th century Europe. Puns were very popular. So there we have the black and more head. Nothing to do with being black, <laughs> and so, other than the fact that it's a Moore's head. The most head that we know as a, as, a, as a much older and stronger tradition, and particularly in Germany, you know, to the point where the, the last pope, the last pope, the coat of arms of the last pope, had a had the Moor's head on. Can I can I have I got time to show you that? Can I show you that? Yeah, I can't bring that. Up. Bring that up just, just a second. Let me see if I can do it here. Just a second, coat Harry, of arms. You there, brother? Yeah, I'm still there. Okay. While he's just looking behind the scenes. 
Wally's finding that image yet. There you go. Um, there, there is. So there, there's the image. It's not what I could do right now. Yeah. Yeah. Then, 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 then we've got the, the image. That's the Moor's head. We, then if I, the black is the king's head in this instance. On the uh, the coat of arms of Pope Benedict the Twenty Third, the last po the last pope. It, you know the funniest thing with that with that shield is that when Benedict was um, when Benedict was the pope it was printed all over all over Rome. Yeah, exactly. And you know, I, I first saw this in Liverpool, in my hometown, Liverpool. You got you got the uh, the coat of arms. It's in Liverpool because Pope Benedict visited Liverpool. And there is a huge that that is his coat of arms, and then you can see the uh, the black and moor's head. Mm. And, and that dates to the 13th century, Freisberg, Germany. But Freisberg, that was his emblem, and so the the Pope coming from that could 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 rightly claim that on his coat of arms. So now, so it's it's a real piece of of of, of living history. Bring it to life, bring his, making history real, making it relevant. You know, and that and that that has the same tradition as this. Is it? Let me, let me just big up substance. Just go back here. Let me just go back. Ding, 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 ding. And pull that down. That's the same. That's the same tradition, the same German tradition we see here on the on this Mona Alexander Mona. He was the town clerk. For a town in northern Germany, and that, that, that's, that's that's one of the images we look at in the the, the gallery. One of the things I like to talk about is the actual building itself. Let me just go back a second, because that building, where, how it came about, it's rooted in that is rooted in slavery, and we talk about slavery and that where where the money come from, where the money come from to make that. We talk about that and how there's in this built at the front here. This is the Sainsbury Wing. The black presence there, which we talk about, and it, it that, that's a very interesting and subtle one there. And of course, of course, we cover the, we cover the king, the, the the black king. This is one of our, one of my favourite ones. This is um, Gossard. It's an absolutely extraordinary. I was talking about this. Here. Let me just look at this. Look at, look at this. Let me just go up a bit. Up a bit. Up a bit. Oh, gone too far. Back a bit. Up a bit. Down a bit. You see that king's you see you see there? On his head there it says Balthazar. That's his name. But around his hat it it says this was made by Jan Gossart. So here he's using the, the, the king, the black king. Advertised himself. Advertising. In fact, it gets worse than that. You see his attendants. Well, I hear that again says um, made by Gossart. And oops, sorry about that. Let me just pick it. Let's pick it. And if we look here, you see here, there's word in there. Let me, I'm, let me make it bigger so you can see it. Du, 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 du. Up a bit. It, the, the Black King is almost like a signpost. You see there, it's got signage. It says, "Blessed." The, and this is praising the, the Virgin Mary, the 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 the, 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 uh, the the Virgin Mary in front of him. So you see, we've got the uh, we've got the the Black King writing on his head, on his hat. Is is a tender that's got his name on. We've got writing here. It's like a a sign signpost, and inevitably. You know, the Black King, guess what? He's got an earring. Let me show you his earring. Let me just, let me just before we finish. The earliest sign of product placement. Through <laughs> well, well, you're so right. This is, this, is, this, is, this is product placement. Why is that? Let me, just cl let me just close it a second. Let me go back in. Let me just show you. We can see. Let me just go across. See his lovely earring there. Mm. No, no white, no white uh, Magus had the king. One of the things I like about this piece is you have some sense that this is a real person. You know, that Gossard knew a, a, an African. 
because you have you see many pieces where you think this artist has never seen a black man yeah. but you have some sense that this is clearly you know a black man and that's why when you look at um see if i can find this a second saint morris Magdeburg. Can you see it? If we look there, it is. That, 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 that's my image, by the way. You, can, you have some sense. Oops. You have some sense of a, of a. We know someone who looks like that. And this is 1250. 1250. We don't, you know, we don't know who the artist is, sadly. But clearly, this artist knew a black person. You know, because if we go back to um, if we go back to my man here, let me just have a look. There he is. You know, I, I feel that this man did not know a black man. Did you, did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Lot less detail, gorish features. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a caricature, it's a caricature. Whereas, if you look at these other guys, look at these other guys, this guy, you know, those strong, the, 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 that nose, those lips, and those lips, it's not a caricature. Those are black man's lips, those are, that's a black man's nose. You know, extraordinary images, but where were we, where were we, come back to that actual. So, so we've gone the Jenny and the King. We also look at, um, Entertainers, we were musicians and entertainers. And then, okay, inevitably, there's, there's the servants and slaves. We, we have a look at some of those. What, what, what's um, interesting is this woman here, Mrs. Oswald. Mrs. Oswald. Let me just tell you. This is a, this, this a slave owner. She inherited, she inherited slaves. And we talk about the fact that Robbie Burns wrote a very a, a poem about it, and not a very flattering poem about, about this woman, because we see all her finery. We have to have to ask ourselves where did the money come from for that finery, and it's all rooted in slavery. And we talk about that, and we look, we look at other other examples, you know, where the money comes from. You know, we follow the money and. Many times you end in some plantation in the Caribbean. This is, a, this, this is a, this this is um these are these are black people we don't know who are there. These two of them. This is a particular interesting one. This is a this is almost like a, a where's a where's Wally. Let me have let me see if I can blow it up. Let me see if we can blow it up. Let me just let's just blow this off. Is that, is that the most? And then we're going to find there's a, there's one black woman here. But you know, you know, to to create some of these paintings, you you work work on the... <laughs> can you see her? Yeah, She's a, yeah she yeah. looks like a fishwife. So this is at the marketplace, the marketplace in um, the Hague in the late 18th century. There's a, a black person there again. Not thousands, but we were there. And that, 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 that's what I like about first, where the artists, they put people in, there's a black presence, and you have to tease it out. But sorry, Terry, you had a question. Um, oh, no, I've, I've lost thought. Lost so, thought. Continue. Yeah, continue. Okay, let me, let me just go back. I mean, I mean, I've got too many. Let me just close that image. Close that. With the, black history, with the Black History Walks, Michael, what yeah. what you is that with um, uh, Mr. Warner? Tony? Yeah, with Tony Warner. Yeah, we do them with Tony Warner on his website. We do them every Monday and not every every other Sunday. We do uh, we we have a we have a tour. We're good. We're looking to ex uh, we're looking to extend that to um, to to take Britain, where where we have. This is, um, I don't know, this is, this is, the National Gallery is about European art from about the, the 12th century, 12th, 13th century, 
right up to the turn of the 20th century, but the 19th the finish with Impressionism. Whereas Take Britain is about British art, British artists. And, and so, it, so we, it, has, it, it covers the same period, but Britain wasn't doing art in the 13th century. There's no British art. It wasn't until the 15th century, 16th century, that we have British art. So we have, we look at the, the, the kings that, that, and kings. That, that, that painting from the Tate Museum, in it. Yeah, the, the infantry man, yeah. That, that's the conflict. Yeah. And again, that's a fabrication, that image. And we'll, we'll talk about that. We, we, we go into that some length. That is a, that is a, a, a made-up image. Totally. In fact, it's pieced together. We can unpick it. The, 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 there's an English presence, a Scottish presence. It's, uh, it's a fabrication, like, like many black presents. But nevertheless, it, it, the artist wants to make a point using black people. And we, we discussed that. And what's so exciting about Tate is there are many black artists there. Chyla's there. We've got Ke uh, Lau, Keith Piper. Uh, that's Keith Piper. Uh, Steve McQueen, Sonia Boyce. Ron Moody, these are artists of color, black artists whose work is in there. So here, they're actually creating culture. To understand, here we have some of the actors, Ira Aldridge is there. But inevitably, there's some, the, 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 uh, the saints, the, the, servants, the servants are there. That, that, that's, that's on the, um, the Tate tour. So they, they, they're very different tours that the, the, National, the National Gallery tour and the Tate tour are, are quite different in terms of the works we cover and the, uh, the, the way because Tate Modern, Tate Britain has more, more about black people contributing to being, to, to culture rather than being subjects of culture as you see in, as, as, they, as they are in many of the National Gallery's paintings. So you, you can, because as, as, as we say, let me just, just a second. We say here, from object of economic capitalists, slaves and servants, workers, through to what, what really is the pinnacle, this here, we, 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 where we define as a cultural capital. People like David Adjaye, you know, he, he's the architect. He designed the, um, the, the, the African American uh, Museum in Washington. You know, Steve McQueen, he's won a, a Turner Prize and he's, and he's won an Oscar. These are black British people who are really creating a culture, defining culture, not just on a national scale, but internationally. So it's something we can be very proud of to be part of our heritage and we can celebrate that we can be part of it. And that's something that I, I, that I try to emphasize as we do the tour. It's a progression. It's a journey that we're on. And we take the journey with the artists and also European culture, because the backdrop of the tour is the, is the movement from the Renaissance into the Enlightenment, into the Romanticism, and the, the social journey that, 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 the, that the people went on, and artists went on to that period to define art, and, and that can be seen in the art. So, so it's, not, it's not just Black Presence tour, it's about a cultural tour in terms of the black, the black presence it, 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 and positioning historically. And it's, they've been well received. Some, some of the reviews have been very, very heartwarming. And, and they've always sold, they always sell out very quickly. I would say that, wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we believe you. And if no, they do sold out, go and buy a ticket and go and learn something on one of these tours, definitely. And you know the, the great, you know, it's not just a, the talks aren't just me talking. We are we, we have a debate and a discussion. Like for instance, one of, one of the things we talk about is um, let's go. Let me see. Is is um, oh, where's she going? This lady. This lady is. It's Queen Charlotte. You know, I've seen yeah, she's, um, she, but I know for me, I don't know. You see, like um, they say, Queen Charlotte has the uh, she 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 has a she comes from a black descendant. Yeah, yeah, is exactly. it is it is that is it just a little percentage of black, or was she full black? 
<laughs> That's a great question. Right. <laughs> okay. Let me look at it. Does no. she look black to you? Not at all. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Now, if, if, if you come on the tour, I've got, some, I've got the one painting that everybody picks up and says, this is why she, she looks black. And there's an argument. There's some people argue her descendants come yeah. from Portuguese kings. And on the one drop principle, she's black. You know, we have, a, exactly. we have a good discussion about what makes her black. And I, I show you some pictures of her. In fact, because I, I, I do, I, I sometimes I do, um, I do tours to um, Kew Gardens yeah. and go to the cottage. Yeah, okay, really. Okay. Yeah, she doesn't really look, look like as if people make them out to be. Okay. Let me, let because me... I always say you, you have to look at the artist's work. Yeah, and that, if you look at the artist's work and you will see the similarities, you will say that all these paintings, if one is black, all of them yeah. are black. Yeah. No, no, it, it, it's, well, exactly that. I, I, mm. I've got... Um, let me just like to, maybe I can maybe I can we can look them up just a second. Queen Charlotte. That's, 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 that's. You have to look at the artist and who commissioned it. At the I, time. Exactly. I've got. Um... That's the one. That's the image. That's the one everybody picks up and says. She must be. Yeah. Yeah, she she's got black because of that one. But, but yeah, if you look at and, and, his work, there is a then, similarity to the same thing. Exactly, it's by Ramsey. And I've, I've got... Um, okay, let me see if I can find it, just a second. And that image that you've That's got thought, right now, Michael, is the image that they have hanging in the Queen Charlotte uh, Hospital. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm trying to... No, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Open something. I don't know what's in the Adobe Premier Auto. Let's have a visit. No, no, no. No, 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 I can't find because I've, I've got I've got a picture which shows you different versions of her over her her, her lifetime. And this this is this is exceptional. This is the only one where she looks remotely. Black. Right. Because if you yeah, if you look at uh, you know that, this I think that this was not this was not her normal artist anyway. This was um Lawrence. This is Lawrence. He did. He did. A, he did this on spec, and apparently she didn't like this painting, so she never took it on. But, but for, to, to my thinking, it's you. She's not black. She's not black. But having said that, I found there's a, there's an artist in in the gallery, and we look at him. This uh, this this guy. This is um, Degas, mm -hmm. and he's a Creole. He's a Creole, so we, we talk we talk about his work, and he's, he's, he does a picture. He has a picture of uh, of a black woman. So here we have a painting by uh, a black artist, Degas, or a Creole, and we'll talk about that when you come on the tour. I'll tell you more about that Creole and the black woman he paints, and we, and we look a bit more at this of this image and understand because at the end of the day, it's an interpretation. History is an understanding. To your point, Terry, you you know artists who did you know the artist who did this, and he did uh, he did art he painted people who looked like that. That's how he painted them. That's one yeah. artist. But there's another yeah. artist who painted uh, here. She's I think she's about eighteen or 20, 19 when that was painted, and here she's in oh she's in a I think she's in her fifties now with this one. Like, yeah, she's in her fifties. You know, and she, we've got to remember she's lived a great life. She married a man who went mad. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. she fathered. She fathered. No, she had fifteen children. Would you believe? 
That's why I think she, that's why she had to stay in Kew Gardens. <laughs> but, but if I, you know, she, in fact, tell you, she also founded Kew Gardens. She did. She was yeah. a lady who started all at Kew Gardens, and and also she's quite she's, she's quite, she was quite a lady. So you know, I, I'd, I'd love to see some some of the some of the, some of the listeners and viewers at uh, one of these on these talks because as I say, it's it's an interaction. We discuss and debate because these things are open to interpretation. Like for instance. You know, I say, I believe this guy saw the black man. It doesn't look like any black man I know. It's, uh, it's, it's interpretation. It's an understanding. You know, where we come, we find come to, come to the debate. <laughs> and if you want to fully see that, if you go to, um, it's Black History Walks. Just you go to Black, Black History Warner. History, how can I spell history here? History. Mm -hmm. Yes, Tony Warner's side. He's been, he's been, he does lots of different tours. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, hopefully in there you'll see. In fact, I think mine are all sold out now. So they may have taken them off. <laughs> he does that. Do, 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 do. Yeah. There, there we are. The, the, the Black Presidents, January. We've, we've read the dates for January. Um, and you click on that and you go to a uh... yeah we might uh, uh, what we might do is we might do we, what we might do as well it, it is um we might come down on one of the tours and film it for the general public it'd be very welcome as long as you pay yeah you know, i'll be happy to see you yeah. well of course we've got to pay our brothers <laughs> 10 pounds all the time for the tours always we have to stand for the peace <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I believe, I believe you guys. I believe you guys. Yeah? <laughs> We're family here, so we, 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 we've got to put. We've got to look after each other. Is that what you call yourself, a family? Yeah. As long as you got the one drop of, as long as you got the one drop of black blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm trying to get myself back here, so I've turned off the screen save, and there you go. Both people. <laughs> Yes, Michael, that's all. Well, look, I tell you, I've really, I've, you know, I've really enjoyed this. Um, 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 Let's have a little I guess, discussion on, 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 on something, right? Um, I just want something. To, I don't want to go off topic, but on topic. Um, <laughs> off topic, because, on topic. Yeah, because of a lot of people and, and nowadays, we, we're, we're hungry to see that majority of people want that black presence so anything that can identify black we, we we seem to turn black do you come across people that just just presume that everything is black you know you know my, my, my challenges or my, is it, we kind of drop our level mm -hmm. our, our, our inquiry level our kind of inquisitive level we accept we accept things that are not quite true because we want to believe we want to know there's a, there's a black presence there and in that desire we, we, we drop our our guard you know desire to to have a black presence and i, I fully understand it and mm -hmm. what, what, what i try and do is um let's look to the facts let's try and let be on a bit more let's let's get to the fact let's argue about the facts not about mm -hmm. and then then, then we can we can we can move forward, and it's it's getting that. For instance, I've just had um, there's an image in the Doomsday Abbreviato, mm -hmm. which shows a black man. Let me, can I, let me show it to you. Let me just show it to you a second. Let me just just I'll show it. To While you. they're doing that, I just want to do a quick advertisement um, for for all UK people that want to go to the Sinetta Awards. Which will be coming in June. We're still waiting on a date from Signetta to create the date, but I want people to come and probably inbox us who would love to come to the USA, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a, a donation system to able to bring the prices of the flights and accommodation down. So we've created a GoFundMe, but we're going to talk about this tomorrow and explain everything in full detail. 
plus other things and the ongoing things that are coming. So I'm just going just for now. If you would like to give us a donation of one pound, two pound, three pound, ten pound, whatever donation you can give, just go to GoFundMe slash UK USA link up. I repeat, GoFundMe slash UK USA link up. We're trying to raise as much as possible so that we can bring the whole UK to the United States, even if we can go there 30 people strong to represent the UK. So we can reduce that price. So we're asking for you to even just donate anything. We don't care what you donate, just go to the GoFundMe and give us something. So I repeat, it's GoFundMe slash UK USA link up. And if you have the opportunity, go to Sign Letter Awards on the GoFundMe and donate as much as you can so he can get that place in the Apollo. And um, I think Sci-Fi is in the comment room. If Sci-Fi could put up the link to the Sci-Netta Awards information, it would be well appreciated. Well, Stephanie, now we can get back. On me, you'll be able to find in the description of this video for the Sarnia Awards. We'll put that in the description of this video so you will be able to see that as well. And there's also a PayPal clickable link on the Black Eyes TV 7 where you can also send your donations, help us get equipment, help us get over there and cover all the different tasks that we need to be dealing with this year, help us get the guests on. So that's there, but the links will be in the description of this video and videos to come from now on. Go to you, Mr. Riggs. Yes, so yes, Michael, as we was talking about this doomsday, which I saw in the archives as well. In, now, in... Uh, this has been criticized as, a, as, an, as an example of en enslavement and racism. <laughs> it's more subtle than that. It's not, it's not enslaved, not racism. It's an, I can, we can deconstruct this based on what he's wearing, uh, particularly, particularly his holes. And it's not a positive image of, of this person, but this is a working man. This is a labor of some form. Now, whether, how we interpret that as racism is challenging. I would just say, from my from my study of this piece, what I've done about it, this is the this shows a man. He's not a royal. He's not he's not a big person in society. He's a junior person. You see here, these are important people. This is you see how the the, the, the robes flow to the ground. That that that's typical of elites. That that's how they were. This this is this is Saint Saint Peter. He's standing on a rock. He's got the keys, keys to the kingdom. And that, that, that's from the Bible. And this is St. Paul, the defender with the sword, defending the word of God. There, there's Mary, the, the mother of God. And there's John, the beloved apostle. But they're and, all and shown, as, shown as elites, well-dressed. Whereas this guy, you know, he's, not, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a working man. He's a working man. So, so whether no, but you know that portrait of that same because you know that robe that you're showing that's in the Victoria and Albert Museum. Oh yeah, yeah, you see, yeah, that's that's it. That's, that's how, that's how, they, and how they describe the, the 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 black man in that in that robe. Exactly. So I would not see this as a as a, a as an image of slavery. Mm -hmm. As an image of, of a working man, a working class man. A lower state, a much lower status than these other people. If we, if you look at it, there's got, there's, I think there's another image here. Can I? Is it another one? Let me just go down a sec. Da, 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 da. There it is. Look. That image. Oops. Let me go back. Oh no. Well, this, this image. Did you see these two here? They're flogging Jesus. They, they, these are. Again, 
You see how the, 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 the short tunic, not the flow rows and the striped hose. God, these are working guys. Not these are not positive images of people. These are not in these, these are not sophisticated, uh, gentrified elites. These are these are these are working, I say working class serfs, peasants. But it, it's very funny how they make them look like a de the devilish kind of face. I know we've had that discussion. This and one, this, this, right, pick, pick you this one, this one here, with this, this one, you know, it's like, oh, what's interesting, you see how small they are compared to Christ. This is size matters. You know, these, these, these are, these are not important people. Whereas Christ, he shows he's more important. He's the most important. Well, this is what the artist is trying to, trying to put across. But coming back to the point here, this, this image is open to interpretation, and it's not it's not the most negative one. There are other interpretations, and that, that's why I urge people to to do oh, it sounds very, to, to do the research, try and understand where the image comes, what's the background to the image, ask questions about it rather than accept you know because it looks like that does not necessarily mean it is that. You have to interpret it and pick pick it, you know, try to pick what's going on. That's why I, I kind of come with, uh, Michael, that's why I always come with understand the author, not the book. Ooh, that's, 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 <laughs> well, but that, but in some ways, that it's easy. Because you can get misinterpreted by just looking at the book. Well, it's often it's easy. It's from. easier to understand the book. The book is in front of you. Yeah. It's there. But you know, then the, author, the author can have an agenda in its, in its entirety where a lot of people might think that, okay, what the book's about, but if the author has his, his own personal agenda of how he perceives something, then you might take it different, depending on the direction. Terry, you are so, so right. And that's, that's where you have to get inside the author's head. Yeah. And many of the artists, the artists I'm working with are dead. Yeah. So we it's hard to get inside their head when we're trying to unpick the stuff. And that's part of the, the fun of mm -hmm. doing that research, doing that unpicking to find out mm -hmm. what the artist might have meant, what did he meant. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I talk about well, well, I, before I start the talk with the people is you have to have the period eye. What do I mean by that? Some sense of what it was like to live then. And the, Simple things like God fearing meant something. Fear of God, because you did fear God. It was put there by God. So you feared the king. You were in awe of the king. The king could heal you because you had the king's touch. You know, these things now today when we fear of God, this 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 is nothing now. The afterlife was really important. You know, really important. You know, so images were important. You know, some say that they say, we see more images in one day, one day, than they would see in this, this period in their entire life. So images were very precious and important. So when you look at an image, the artist, the guy, the guy who painted it, the guy who commissioned it, are really trying to say something, get a big, big story into a small space. And the, the, the fun is unpicking that story, finding what he's trying to say, interpreting the story. Mm -hmm. Richie, is there any questions you'd like to ask? Um, at this point, I don't. I mean, as you've covered all the bases, you've given us another nice backdrop on British presence. Um, is there any, Michael, is there any secrets on your side? <laughs> any secrets? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You know, always want a hidden gem. There's many hidden gems. There's many hidden gems. There's, um, have you ever been to a, a history festival? No, I have not. Well, there's a couple, there's a, there's a couple coming up, and I really urge you to look at and you to look at one is the Hay Festival, a Hay Literary Festival. And there they celebrate well, um, Clinton. Um, not George Clinton. 
for instance, President Clinton called the hate festival uh, Woodstock for the mind. It's a great place. You get historians there, writers. There's so much going on. I urge you to have a look at a festival. Go to a festival this summer. The one I'm going to, and I'm, I'll be, I'm going to hate, the Hay Festival. I'll be, I'll be, I'm, 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 I'm going there. I'll be attending there. But I'll be presenting at the Chalk Valley Farm, the Chalk Valley History Festival. There'll be a, there'll be a, hopefully there'll be a session on John Blank there. Okay. And these history festivals, they celebrate all different aspects of British history. And traditionally, this has been mainly the Tudors and World War II, or the two world wars. But it's expanding now. And you get, there's a really interesting this role playing. You get guys in Rome, Roman times, and they live as Romans, or Anglo-Saxons, or uh, Vikings, quite extraordinary. And I'm going to go there this year with John Blank. And I guess maybe there'll come a time, in maybe not this year, maybe next year, then we go dressed as John Blank in the period. So we have black people acting out our history or black history in British history. <laughs> well, well, hold on, Michael, one second. Yeah, go on. Um, where is the position of the plaque? Well, uh, okay, the John Blank plaque is in, is in Greenwich. It's in the Naval College, Greenwich. There's a plaque there, and the plaque, the actual plaque itself is in the um, is in the the uh, the visitor center. It's in the visitor center. I'll, I'll show you. Let me show you. Just let me show you where it is. Just a second. I'll show you. Well, have you have you have you been there? No, I haven't been there yet. Why not? That's, that's what I'm going to add to my blue plaque tour. <laughs> you want to buy the ones? Yeah. No, but, but I, I urge you to have a look at the Hay Festival and the Chalk, the Chalk Valley History Festival. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, these are really interesting places to see history in action. And as I say, I'm, I'm going to introduce John Blank. Just about a talk, but maybe next year mm -hmm. we actually take a character, John Blank. We do a bit of role playing. But then, is there a possibility we could do a, a John Blank tour? What do you mean, John Blank? A John Blank tour? That's into you know. Uh, that'd be difficult, that because to do it because he, he because he's all over the place. No, but well, we could do places he's visited. Because one of the things I'm working on, yeah, is the uh, I want to. I'm going to have an exhibition, a John Blank exhibition of all the work. Yeah, I'd hope I'd hope to have it at one of the one of the places that John Blank was was known at, but he's not. It wouldn't be as as magical where as. Is art, where is the artwork? In saying that, it's in the, the College of Arms. It's in the College of Arms. In the College of Arms. Where's the College of Arms? It's it, it's it's just just by Saint Paul's, just literally around the corner from Saint Paul's. I don't know if you you know the wobbly bridge from the love from the. Yeah. Take mod. It's at the very end of that, just by St. Paul's. Okay, I'm going to let you access to see it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, it's too precious, it's too precious, too delicate. Because it's, it's each time they bring it out, something falls off it. Ah. You know, it I'm is in a delicate things. state. <laughs> Nevertheless, I, I would encourage them to get it out, because it's... It, it's a magnificent document, it is. Yeah, we, we, that's what I said. We can arrange this for the general public one day so that they can just take it, at least even if it's once a year, so that the general public can see it. That would be an interesting one, that would be an interesting concept once a year if they could do it. Um, it's something you could write to them about, you can try. Yeah. You can try to see, if, they, say, see if they're interested. I always say, you trying, because if you don't ask for that, that, Thank you. That's, that's, that's exactly what my mum my, my, my used to say. Those who don't ask, don't get. But look, Terry, let me challenge you now with this, uh, this festival idea. Yeah, go on. Have a look at some of these festivals, particularly the Chalk Valley Farm History Festival. Mm -hmm. And Because right now, it's, it's British history. And I'm just making a little way with this John Blank as part of British history. And... It'd be great if you were there to do do your pitch for um, 
we, we, we could bring in other characters in, in, in British history. I'm, I'm, still, I'm, still, I'm still doing. I'm still trying to do the history. The history of um, King James. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Well, you've got a long way to go. You've got a long way to go. Yeah, and and and, and the black presence in that period of time. Okay. Okay. Have you seen Miranda's book, The Black Tudors? Yeah. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Go on. Yeah, I'm going to say yeah, that's a good place to start. She's been. She's been she has a, there's a good section on John Blank and the other and other characters from the same period. Is it the lady that did the, the the Black Prince? Oh no, that that that's uh, she her book. That's um, uh, Kat, Catherine Fletcher, Kathy Fletcher. She did yeah. uh, Alexandra Medici. She did another book, is it? I don't know. I don't. It, I know she, she she said she read another book. But I don't. I don't know the name of it. What 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 do you ask? No, because uh, it, it was it, it was the, the period of because I'm looking at the, the dress sense and understanding some of the influential dresses that we had as black people. Okay, bringing into the into the um, into the Black Britain at that t at that time, Black Tudor. Well, the, well, that's in general. The, uh, the ones I've seen, they're, all, they're, they're wearing. Uh, dresses that that, that Victoria that not Victoria's. The Tudor people would have drawn. They didn't wear anything special. No. The images I've seen of black people from the period. Okay. But other than that, so I'm asking everyone: when you have this opportunity, donate, donate, donate. <laughs> this is all about black presence, about black people spending black, being black, and following black. But you know what? It's time to spend and take action. If you have the opportunity, go to the Black History Walks. Go to the, the what's it called again? On the Black History Walks? The websites. No, what's no, what, no when they go on the website, what is what is that line that is, the black presence? What is your talk? Oh, about? the black presence in the National Gallery. The black the presence man. in the National Gallery. Yeah. Pay that little 10 pounds. Follow Michael around the gallery and he will give you the black pictures and the black presence within the gallery itself. And yeah, then, thank, thank you for the big one. Yeah, and then soon we need to go back to our original project, which is the Victorian album. Wow. We need to crack the whole museum down and if we could get the opportunity to go into that cellar because everyone's been dying to say, oh, I can't get into that cellar. I don't know how to get into that cellar, blah, blah, blah. And then we can able to get the Medici picture and let them bring it out. You know, but the good whole point, good point. full of it. Hmm. So if you have that opportunity, we can try to arrange something before the summer and ask people to come along. Then, as I said, is if you have the opportunity, all we ask for is one dollar into the Black Eyes TV fund. Or can you help us as to move as in 30 to 40 strong? And we're inviting people to come up with us to this what we call the Sign Letter Awards in June. So it's going to be a massive event, and I want people to come. We're still arranging for flights and accommodation. And we're asking for you to go to GoFundMe slash UK USA link up and give us a donation because we have to take equipment. We have to get, we have to look after people. We have to do quite a lot. We have to buy tickets and, and whatsoever. There is going to be Titans TV, hopefully contents over everything. The people's verses, which is what we call the core. There's a few of us on there and we're, we're trying to invest and to encourage people to come because it's going to be in the Apollo and Apollo Theatre is a legacy place. So we're trying to create a legacy by having this big massive photograph of saying we was there because we're creating a historical bit, a book of everything to be documented of what we find our historians of the future documented in this book. 
in a photographic way as well as the information written down. So we need your investments and your sponsorships and your help so that we can actually take action for 2008 because 2008 is about action. No more talking. We've done the talking. We show you the facts. We give you the evidence and we give you the proof. As Michael has done, he will show you the evidence, give you the proof, and he will show you the facts. We don't deal in belief in the house, the house of schools of thought. It's all about the power moves. Richie. Yes, my brother. Yes. All I have to say before we sign out is thank you again to Michael for presenting the information, talk to the people, having a great conversation. I want to say big up to my fellow black media, content over everything, HMP TV, Sarnetta TV, Black Magic, Bubba TV. Boy, the list goes on. Jedi, respect. All the man them out there pulling moves. Yeah, moving the, moving this whole conscious community here in the UK forward, as well as the UK, uh, USA family. And look out for future shows next week. A show to look out for is Delon from Ancestral Voices. He'll be joining us. Oh, and don't forget, before you even get there, we've got, we've got Cuba on Thursday. All right. That's so, that's so, that's so. All. That's what we that's where we, we, we do that little talk. Gang, 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 gang. Guiding with a new generation. This is what we're talking about. Big Avel, big up. Um, Lady Sapphire, big up. Empress, big up. And many more within the chat room. Go on. Other than that, it's another episode. Yeah, people, you know what time it is. Like, share, and subscribe the videos. Yeah, join us again soon. We'll be back tomorrow as well, me and Terry, giving you the update on the GoFundMe, the Sarnia TV Awards, and future projects to come. Thank oh, oh and, 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 and one more one more thing. I want to pick up the true historian. The that's true all. historian, and, and and MBK. That's all. MBK yeah. out there pushing... The videos, pushing the live shows, pushing the Black Eyes TV narrative in their circles. So vice versa. Big up to MBK. Big up to True Historian. Can't wait to see him on the show again. He was talking early in the back chat about slavery and companies. I did like that narrative. I'm looking forward to that. So watch this space for the UK, USA link up shows. Yeah. Peace, 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 people. Power moves. Like Guys, Classic, thank you for having me on the show. Really enjoyed it. Great talking to you and, and, and the people. Really, really good fun. And I hope to be back soon. Thank yeah. you.